Welcome everyone to the BCA FN Climate Action Webinar. My name is Patricia Rojas. I am the Regional Climate Change Coordinator for the BC Assembly of First Nations. I am here today with my colleague, Joanna. She is going to help us with the technology. And before starting, I like to acknowledge the territory where I live and work. This is the unceded territory of Williams Lake First Nation. If you feel comfortable, please um, introduce yourself in the chat box and tell us where are you coming from. So today's webinar is about energy efficient, efficient upgrades in First Nations homes and community buildings. And I am very excited to share four great presentations with you today. Before starting, presenting our speakers, I'd like to explain a few housekeeping items. So this webinar is being recorded and the recording will be posted at the BCFN website. We will share the link with you in the follow-up email after this webinar. And if you have any, any technical issues as we have today, please send us a text to Joanna Prince using the chat or you can also call her at 778-945-9911. For questions or comments, you have two options. You can post your question or comment in the chat box during the presentations. The chat icon is in the bottom of the screen. Or if you want to speak, please raise your hand and I invite you to unmute yourself and after the presentations. So for, today, for today's agenda, we have four amazing presentations. And I am pleased to present um, Sean Leroy, the director of the Community King Energy Branch at the BC Ministry of Energy, Mines and Low Carbon Innovation. Sean's office supports the decarbonization of community energy systems across BC. Sean brings his experience from different positions and the provincial and the federal government in topics such as environmental assessment, mining, low carbon fuels, and intergovernmental relations. Today, Jones will speak about the provincial energy efficiency rebates and incentives, in particular, the Indigenous Community Energy Coach Program and the Indigenous Community Heat Plant Incentive. Next, we have a joint presentation from Seth Altem of BC Hydro and Carl Suham from Fortis BC. Seth supports indigenous communities and organizations with their energy conservation planning and works directly with communities to support their participation in BC Hydro's energy conservation programs and other initiatives. Carl Suham leads the delivery of Fortis Community, Forty Species Community Based Conservation and Efficiency Programs to the Indigenous Communities and Local Governments. She has more than 20 years of experience leading behavior change programs and supporting communities to achieve their energy efficiency improvement goals. Today, Seth and Carol will present on programs and incentives to support energy conservation improvements and retrofits in existing homes and new buildings. Finally, we have the honor of welcoming Leona Hamchit from the Helsuk Nation. Leona is the Climbing Action Coordinator for her nation and works with a peer network of Climbing Action Coordinators through the Coastal First Nation. Leona's goal is to decarbonize the cost to transition of diesel generation and reducing fossil fuels transportation through her ecological, ecologically and culturally significant territories. Leona also collaborates on national networks and she notes that her team support this hard work by the Helsuk for the Helsuk to protect and preserve the future of her, their children's tomorrow. So today, Leona will share with us uh, all the amazing work that her nation has done to install heat pumps since 2017 in community homes. 
So many thanks to all our presenters for being here today and for preparing the, all the information and the slides that we are going to share today. Um, now I will invite our first speaker, Sean Leroy, to take in from here. And Sean, you have 15 minutes. Hi everyone, my name is Sean. I hope you can all hear me. I'm uh, joining you today from the beautiful territories of the Esquimalt and Songhees nations. I'm just gonna start sharing my screen here, just one second. So is that, how is that looking? Can everyone see my uh, slides now? Right on. So I'm very pleased to be uh, here today to provide an overview of the programs and funding we have under the Clean BC program to support in energy efficiency projects in Indigenous communities. I'm going to go um, relatively quickly through things so that we can get on to our other speakers and I'm very open if you people want to stop or ask questions in the chat or we can follow up afterwards if there's points of clarification. I'm going to speak a little bit about the Clean BC Plan, um, our Better Homes and Better Buildings program. Uh, we're really proud of the Indigenous Community Energy Coach program and the accompanying heat pump incentive. And we have some new construction programs starting up. And then we'll close with some other funding and training opportunities. So briefly, the Clean BC Plan, I think many have heard about, and includes a whole bunch of different components um, which is an umbrella for the um, province's efforts to uh, fight, fight climate change and reduce our, our greenhouse gas emissions. A lot of the uh, things I'm going to be describing in the presentation fall under the category of improving where we live and work, but there are other parts of the Clean BC Plan if you're interested related to transportation, waste, industry, and all these other things on the slide here. And you can uh, read about it online on the provincial government's website. Focusing in on the topic for today, first thing I'll talk about is our Better Homes program. The goal of this program is to accelerate retrofits that help households reduce greenhouse gas emissions and energy use. There are incentives related to high efficiency heating equipment and building envelope improvements. And uh, this, fun, this program has been underway for some time and will continue on uh, through to 2023. It's co-funded with the federal government. There's a lot of different incentives for different things under this program. So we've created a website uh, focused on support for Indigenous communities. The address is there at the bottom of this slide. It's a great hub of information for these rebates, rebates and also other supports uh, for reducing energy use and greenhouse gas, gas emissions from new and existing homes. And it includes other resources to learn about energy efficiency, upgrades, services and contractors. The next uh, program I'd like to talk a bit about is uh, Clean BC Indigenous Community Energy Coach Program. This is a program that uh, allows, uh, the idea is to be able to have uh, conversations to discuss with a, a person uh, funding opportunities available to support fuel switching and energy efficiency projects with a particular focus on an incentive we have targeted at uh, heat pumps in Indigenous communities. The idea is that uh, your community works with the coach to identify, assess and prioritize potential space and water heating fuel switching opportunities and other energy efficiency projects within your communities. And also to assist with heat pump installation planning and uh, providing support on the different um, applications for different types of funding support through Clean BC and identify other additional incentives that might be uh, available for retrofit upgrades. The different goals of the Indigenous Community Energy GOAT program are to you know, facilitate the implementation of fuel switching and energy efficiency projects, to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, to conserve energy and make homes and buildings healthier, more comfortable, 
to meet your community's energy goals and to build capacity and awareness related to energy efficiency and fuel switching. Here's some of the information you can see on the, um, the website for the program, that there are specific incentives for heat pumps for residential buildings and also for community buildings. And if these are the types of things that are of interest to you, um, if you reach out and speak with the, our, our community energy coach, then you can learn more about the specifics of the different types of incentives we have. To date, the incentive has supported 86 heat pumps in uh, two remote Indigenous communities and 90 additional heat pumps in another two communities and in, uh, over 100 other heat pump installations that are planned in four other communities. So we're really excited that this is starting to build momentum. The third um, program that I want to speak a bit about today is relatively new. This is the Clean BC Better Homes new construction program, which provides rebates for the construction of new high performance electric homes in BC. And this is focused within BC Hydro Service Territory. Licensed residential builders, owner builders, or builders authorized by Indigenous communities can apply for program rebates. For specifically related questions related to the new construction program, I've provided the email address betterhomesbc at gov.bc.ca, which is a, the, what we recommend for questions about the new construction program because it's fairly new and we would like to understand the questions that communities have. And then there are other uh, sources of information here on this slide. Um, we mentioned before the uh, Better Homes BC uh, in Indigenous support focused um, website that summarizes all of the different programs available. And uh, we also uh, really like the First Nations Home Energy Save um, website created by the Fraser Basin Council. So thank you for this opportunity. If you have any questions, uh, there's my email address and happy for folks to reach out. Um, there's a lot of interesting information from the other speakers today. Um, so I uh, you know, turn it over to Patricia. I think the idea is that you encourage people to gather your questions and then we can try to respond all together um, at the end or following this session. So thank you very much. Thank you, Sean. As a reminder, we, ha we will have our Q&A period at the end of the uh, presentations, uh, but you can start using the chat box to write questions for Sean. So our next speaker is um, uh, Seth and Carol. Uh, Seth and Carol, you have uh, 30 minutes for your presentation. Thank you very much. Thanks, Patricia. Um, hi, everyone. Can everyone see my screen all right right now? Or uh, can a few people maybe? Okay, great. Yeah, uh, so as Patricia said, um, Carol and I are going to tag team and kind of use uh, hopefully less than half an hour if we can. Um, and yeah, just to introduce myself, I'm really uh, happy to be here today. My name is Seth Oldham. I'm with BC Hydro. Uh, and I work to support Indigenous communities and organizations um, through our various programs and other funding initiatives related to energy conservation. Uh, and I'm joining you today from the traditional and unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh peoples. Um, I'm based here in, in Vancouver, but I work with Indigenous communities all over BC Hydro's uh, service territory. And I'm happy to see really uh, quite a few familiar faces and names and, and nations that we've uh, worked with or uh, have communicated with today. Also like to give space for uh, my colleague Carol to introduce yourself. I'm uh, Carol Suhan, I'm Fortis BC and I'm calling to in today from the Okanagan uh, Felix. Uh, sorry, uh, Suk uh, people's um, area from Kelowna BC and um, like Seth I work with Indigenous communities across British Columbia. Um, it, within the Fortis, well, the Fortis BC Electricity Territory, which is the Okanagan Kootenays, and of course, natural gas for the rest of the province. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll back back to you, Seth, to, to get her going here. Thank you, Carol. 
Um, so yeah, I think um, most of you are, are here today because you're interested, probably don't need to like introduce much of this, but you know, really the benefits of energy conservation management and beyond just community saving energy, uh, connected to affordability and climate action, uh, health, local economic development, NPC Hydro and Fortis BC and Clean BC. Uh, we have energy conservation program offers that can support um, your work primarily, you know, well, not primarily, but in uh, both residential housing as well as uh, some community buildings. Um, and so that's related to existing homes and, uh, and energy management as well. So the program support and funding that Carol and I will be talking today, it can be stacked with uh, other federal and provincial program programs or funding offers. So the list here in this uh, the PDF of the deck, I think is going to be shared with you. Um, that link in there to the, the list, the province of BC's list of opportunities. Um, can, to the meeting. And so this is just a, a quick overview that we'll be talking about in more detail of the residential um, programs that we have for existing, existing homes. So there's uh, the Energy Conservation Assistance Program, Communities Conservation Program, uh, Social Housing Retrofit Support Program, and the species New Home Program as well. And um, yeah, the first program, which well, uh, Seth just mentioned, of course, is the um, ECAP program or Energy Conservation Assistance Program. And I think a lot of folks in this call may have participated in some capacity, but this is where we would go into, and this is a turnkey kind of program that um, once the registration is complete, we make, you know, arrange to make appointments with each, each homeowner or renter. And uh, we will do uh, a walkthrough uh, energy evaluation of the home. And while we're doing that, we'll also will install you know, energy saving products like um, LED light bulbs, uh, you know, efficient shower nozzles, that kind of thing. Oh, also again, the, yeah, draft proofing around the front door. Um, but, but probably as, as importantly, we want to be talking to the household um, members or, um, and just talk about how energy is used in the home and how we, you know, tips and ideas and how to use less energy. And then we're also going to be looking at um, I mean, those more important, bigger kinds of pictures like how, the, the um, age, age and uh, efficiency of the furnace, uh, what kind of insulation is it adequate, you know, in the home, and um, also again, you know, uh, age and condition of, of refrigerators, so old refrigerators, old furnaces, etc. We would make subsequent appointments to come back and replace all of that in the homes, and this is absolutely free. So yes, there might be several steps to this, but I just want to say the whole, everything along the way is free. Um, and um, yeah, I think if I also note here, of course, that manu uh, manufactured homes are, um, we can do all of that sort of first phase, the basic ECAP, we can't do the advanced at this point in time, just because we don't have the technology and all of the equipment ready to, to go on that, but perhaps we were saying early 2021, I think it might be to the latter part of 2021, mostly because of COVID and the challenges we've had there. And um, yeah, I, I won't play this video here, but we just want to mention it to you. If you do just want to see a couple of communities experience with ECAP, you can literally Google ECAP video and you can, uh, you can watch this video. It takes a couple, about two or three minutes, but it just again shows that folks and communities have found it to be really valuable. So um, something for you to look at afterwards. And there's a link, uh, the PDF that uh, that you'll get, we'll have a, you can click on that image and it will, uh, it'll start the video for you. Too. Um, so in addition to ECAP, uh, a newer program that was launched in 2019 is the Indigenous Communities Conservation Program. Uh, and so this supports community-led home energy upgrades and there are two program streams, um, I like to call them streams. They're sort of like sub-programs within the ICCP. Um, and the first, uh, which is stream one, uh, is free energy saving products and salary support and training. It's essentially sort of a do-it-yourself version of, uh, of ECAP that Carol was just speaking about. Um, and stream two is primarily a rebate stream um, for home energy upgrades. Uh, and there's a, a training component to that as well. 
So really the Indigenous Communities Conservation Program is it's ideal for communities that have plans to um, you know, conduct home renovations and are looking to support um, and improve energy efficiency in their communities' homes. Um, perhaps if there's trades training or job readiness programs that provide local uh, skilled labor that could you know, participate in that work in the homes. Um, and then also as well you know, uh, for, I guess, communities that have previously participated in ECAP, but they're interested in uh, pursuing additional home energy upgrades, the, the rebate stream is, uh, is sort of an ideal opportunity there. So I think the one thing to mention too is that communities have the option to proceed with like stream one or stream two or both streams at the same time is totally up to you. Um, any any communities where homes have gone through ECAP in the last, um, you know, sort of eight years or less wouldn't be eligible for stream one, but the rebate stream is, uh, is available to you. And we'll get into more details on these in the next few slides. Speaking to uh, stream one right now. Sorry, I jumped ahead. Um, so this is the free and the sort of do-it-yourself version of, of ECAP. So really, how stream one works is uh, you know there's sort of there's an application process um, to to install energy saving products in the homes. Um, that application process is fairly informal. Um, it's just sort of you know usually Carol or I um, you know in with a community we'll talk we can share. Uh, information like in a deck like this. Um, for BC Hydro's side, we would uh, set up a contribution agreement with the community to, and that commits us to providing the, the energy saving products for free, uh, as well as the, the training and the salary support. And then for the is how they implement the program is they would just have, uh, actually, no, sorry, I won't speak to that. I'm talking about debates now, pardon me. And then once we have that uh, that kind of contribution agreement in place, uh, you then order free energy saving products through the virtual storefront. So it's just you kind of go in, there's login information, you would sign in, order, uh, you know, the various products. I'll have a list of those on the next slide. Um, they get delivered to your community. Uh, and then after the products are delivered, you would uh, schedule a training session for your community's home energy technicians uh, and kind of go over the product installation and, uh, and sort of how to or assess uh, other energy saving opportunities in the homes while, while they're installing the products. Uh, and then you can uh, continue with the work and assessments and uh, product installation until complete. And that's basically it. And then this is the list of energy savings products that are included in stream one of the program. So it's uh, LED light bulbs, uh, 25 per home. So this is like sort of the, the maximum amount. Sometimes some communities have done, uh, you know, have done renovations or have done draft proofing measures or have done some of these things already in your homes. So you don't have to order all of these things. So the last thing we want is to kind of send stuff and sit on a shelf and not get used uh, in the community. But you know, this is the sort of maximum amount per home. So light bulbs, uh, there's water saving measures for, for kitchen faucets, bathroom faucets and, uh, and shower heads as well. Uh, basic draft proofing measures around doors and windows, um, different options depending on the situation. And there's also like a smart power strip, uh, close uh, clothesline or a dryer rack, um, pipe wrap, some things like that. So those are the those are the measures that are included in the program. And these are just some photos um, from some of the pilot work that we did in Skidigit and Old Masset and uh, in Kit Kat territory. So sort of the, the pilot pilot. I guess, projects that happened in those communities that informed the development of the ICCP. And, uh, and then stream two of the program is the rebate stream. So that's, uh, we'll I'll kind of go through the rebate table, Carol, I will in a couple slides from now. And, and really that's, it's, uh, it's sort of a collection of rebates um, from other BC Hydro programs, but we really like boosted the, especially the building envelope, like the air ceiling and insulation rebates. Uh, and there are some additional rebates that are included in this program that uh, aren't available in some other offers just to, to other um, customers. So, and then there's a training component as well and best practices for air ceiling insulation retrofits. And that's uh, offered to the communities, um, building maintenance professionals, if they're gonna be participating in those renovations um, or contractors, if, uh, if they would like that training. And again, uh, sort of how the program works, similar to Stream 1, you know, there's sort of a, just an intake and application process where we exchange information 
um, for BC Hydro. I guess the, the main divider, or not divider, but the way to think about this is um, some communities have a natural gas connection and, uh, and electricity as well, obviously. And so they'll have a mixture of homes that are heated by, by gas or electric. So um, if you have a mixture of homes, BC Hydro's rebates would cover any work done in homes heated electricity. Uh, and Florida BC's rebates would cover renovations in any homes that are natural gas. Um, and for homes that aren't heated by either of those, um, there's uh, options that, uh, that could potentially come into play through Clean BC programs that they have as well to uh, have the fossil fuel plants aside from natural gas. Um, so we set up the agreement or the application is how Fortis BC works on it. It's a bit, um, a little bit different just because we're two different companies. Uh, and then we would, um, you know, deliver the training. If that's something that, uh, that you're interested in taking part in, then you would continue with your home energy upgrades and renovations and retrofits until you're done and then apply for the rebates once they And Carol, I've been talking a lot. Do you want to cover both, uh, both these rebate slides perhaps? I think we had them split up, but, uh. Sure. Sure. Uh, actually, I'll just say if it is a, if you do have naturally natural gas heated homes, the application process is just a, it's actually quite a, an online process with BC, with Fortis BC. It takes a couple of minutes, um, so that, that's probably the biggest difference between the BC Hydro and the Fortis BC rebates. That said, the value of each of these rebates, the, 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 regardless of whether it's an electrically heated home or a gas heated home. It's identical, and we've also tried to make the application process, you know, a, a, a virtually a, a identical as well. So you know, I know Seth talked a little bit about there's a few things that are added to the Indigenous Community Program, which we wouldn't have with other rebates. But most, first and foremost, is health and safety, up to a thousand dollars per home uh, to any mitigation or any um, sort of renovations to help you make the home more comfortable, more energy efficient. So for example, if you're removing mold, you know, up to a thousand dollars to re remove that mold. And then of course the additional um, ins uh, rebates for insulation. And you can see it's broken down by kind of house part, um, you know, there's attic insulation, basement, et cetera. And again, we're basically is on a per square foot by the, the R value added. And generally speaking, also you can see that sort of the, the maximum amount, $1,800, $2,000. And if you're doing a whole home, we're getting very close to providing that, those full amounts of those kinds of, um, of the, the costs of the insulation added. Um, windows and doors, um, you can see they have either $100 or $200 per window or door. And these must be Energy Star uh, windows. But what we've, what we know now, though, is that if you go from a standard, let's say, a dual, a two, a double, double pane window, and you go to a triple pane window, Energy Star, that certainly that two hundred dollars per window pays one hundred percent of the incremental cost. So I think it really makes sense if you're going to be replacing windows to actually go to that the highest quality window, and it, it does make a big difference in the comfort of the home afterwards. Uh, similarly, we have um, ventilation. Obviously, that's important if you are uh, sealing your house, making it more airtight, uh, increasing the insulation, even changing the heating systems. Having good ventilation is really important. So we have you know, bathroom fans, uh, ducts, insulation, and now also HRVs uh, up to $1,200 per home as well. And then from the, the next slide, we have um, obviously... Uh, it's the heating equipment. So we've got, if you're the advanced programmable or smart thermostats, you can see up to $150 per um, uh, a th thermostat. Uh, we have rebates. Um, and again, this is for Fortis BC Electric and BC Hydroelectric. It doesn't matter which electricity company you get the electricity or funding from, uh, up to, well, say $1,000 per fridge, $400 per freezer. Uh, just know that these are replacement costs. So if you, um, you must be replacing an old, like it's an 18 year old, thereabouts um, refrigerator. But again, we pretty much provide the cost of a new refrigerator. Heat pumps, you can see whether it is a, um, a, a central system or a mini bit, a variable speed. Um, and like I said, we've got central systems there as well, but also mini split ductless between 1,000 and 2,000. The price and the, the, the value of the rebates in the 
for the CC electricity area is a bit higher, but we could, you know, just talk to us offline on that one. Furnaces, obviously, whether you're going for a 96% um, or 97% efficiency to the two or $3,000. And, um, and then of course, uh, hot water heating systems, um, $1,000 for a heat pump water heater and um, and either 500 to, or to $2,500, uh, depending what kind of natural gas water heater you might uh, be installing. And again, you've got photos here of um, installations of windows, Starline, which is again, our experience is that, well, again, these tri triple pane windows really make a big difference in terms of comfort um, and draft and draft, getting rid of the drafts around windows can make a big deal as well. And then we have, let me go for new home. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, I don't know how many, I know they're on reserve. There aren't that many multifamily apartment buildings, your types of apartment buildings, but if you do have that, or again, if you're working with folks who are living off reserve and live in multifamily, um, either apartments or that type of thing, we do have pretty significant funding support there as well to do energy studies, um, actually implementing, um, you know, finding the contractors, um, helping you write the agreements, you know, with, with contractors will all we support you along the way. And of course, you know, really good incentives and, and rebates to, you know, for you to install more uh, efficient equipment. And um, like I say, that is what we call it a multi-unit building. We're looking at sort of a minimum of nine units. Um, and again, um, I think Clean BC has some additional funding support and you can access this funding directly through BC Housing uh, BC Nonprofit Housing Association, or Fortis BC, or BC Hydro. So it's it, you can you can whoever you're talking to will be able to, should be able to help direct you to this uh, funding uh, program here as well. And uh, and then for new construction, uh, uh, um, Fortis does have we kind of have two buckets of funding here. Uh, one is on the design side. So we, we are really trying to encourage um, step code. The, the, and this is the BC energy step code. And, and it's, we're going away from that very prescriptive, you must have this kind of window or this kind of you know, wall uh, structure. Th this particular uh, step code approach is much more of um, doing what's right for your community and doing what's right for your home and working with your designer or your architect and um, and just and at the end of the day, we we do have a, sort of a test to see how efficient that those homes are. The, the step codes go from basically level one, which is just where you're starting to get the home tested, right through to step code five, which is you know could be almost net like it could be net zero, which means that it's actually producing as much or more energy than you're using in the home. Um, but anyway, the first bucket of funding we have is up to seven thousand dollars, and that would be for your um, your designer to work with your builder, uh, work with the, the folks that are going to be fighting your heating system, your hot water heating system, your lighting. They work all together and say, okay, this is what we're going to do for this home. And basically, I can say from our experience that $7,000 pretty much covers 100% of the cost to do that. And I, I highly recommend it. I just want to say this was um, the Tundaha um Lower Kootenai Indian Band in Creston. They were last year. They were planning to build a couple of homes to Step Code Three, which is a fantastic. You know, that means it's around twenty to thirty percent more efficient than a standard built home. But we, they got involved and they took advantage of this design um, funding. They they brought the designer together, the builder, etc., the home energy evaluator, and they got the homes up to Step Code Five and at no additional cost. So it really was a. a a good exercise and now we really encourage you know everyone who um is good building homes to, to go this route and on top of the this design funding we do have funding to to support like rebates here maybe the next slide there it's that um and, and that actually is to help if, if, if there are additional costs to build the home to a higher standard. So it, again, it's, it's based on the step code, you know, step code three, you know, three, it's $3,000 per home up to step code five is $10,000 per home. Um, I'll just mention right now, we're looking at, we're, we're going to be increasing the value of this by 30%. That will probably happen in mid-May, maybe the beginning of May. So if you're 
come to us now and you're starting to build a home, you would actually get greater um, value, greater value of rebates than this. But I thought here's a minimum that we can do. Um, and then you can also get additional, you know, um, rebates specifically for, you know, um, water heaters or sorry, fridge, well, appliances and, and um, gas, gas fireplaces, etc. Well, by the way, the, to get this additional rebate, you do have to have be a gas heated home. Um, if you're going to be electrically heated home, that was where you would go through the provinces program. So there's, there's funding support for both, um, whether you're going for gas heated or electrically heated home. But just again, if it's gas heated, you'd come through Fortis. If it was electricity and you were in the Fortis electricity territory, you'd come, again, you stay with Fortis. Otherwise, it would be going through the, the provincial program. And then the, the last slide, I'll just mention, if you aren't able to go to a step code two or higher, um, option B, the next slide, Seth, we still have some rebates. Again, they would be very specifically for the equipment that would go in it. So whether you know it's a water heater or a furnace, again, it, even if you aren't building to that high, that step code rating, we still would really encourage to get the most efficient equipment possible. And, and that's how we're trying to do that is um, with through these incentives to help you along the way. And I think with that, I'll pass it back to Seth. Because now I've been talking a lot. <laughs> yeah, we got a total trade off here. Um, so BC Hydro, um, I guess our approach to supporting new construction is, is a little bit different in that um, focus our work on, I guess, residential uh, new construction through enabling the building industry to implement new energy efficiency codes and standards. Um, and so specifically, we want to make sure con the construction industry is um, aware of any energy efficient codes and standards uh, in existence. For example, the BC Energy Step Code uh, that Carol was just mentioning, um, help them to understand the benefits and um, enable them to kind of overcome any adoption barriers. And so uh, I'm not going to probably spend too much time on this, but really just wanting to kind of focus like that's how I guess there's just sort of a different approach um, in, in how, we're, how we're sort of focusing the efforts on new construction. Um, and then there are some other interesting supports that we're doing for, for new homes as well. Um, and so there's, you know, opportunities to greatly improve uh, energy efficiency and new construction starting right at the design stage of a project, um, like Carol was mentioning. And the New Hawk Nation Housing Initiative is a really good example of this. And, uh, they worked with BC Hydro and BC Housing to review energy performance and building science practices in new housing plans and newly constructed homes. And so the results of this work were incorporated in the Coastal First Nations New Housing Guide uh, and specifically in New Hawk's housing plans and specifications. And they created a really great video series called The Wet West Coast. Um, and so the PDF that you'll have of this deck, there's a hyperlink that you can click on in there. Uh, that'll take you to that and also on the next slide there's other uh, to it as well so this video it's two minutes long it's a great teaser i think just in the interest of time we won't show it uh, we won't show it now but um but yeah you're welcome to uh, to view that uh, after the after the presentation today hon. and then there's from for more information if you're interested in sort of some of those uh, you know building association level initiatives and some other resources that are available um in bc housing's research center um, and also the link to the building specifications on the West Coast. Um, sorry, uh, those links are there. You'll have them in your deck. And there's a, an email that you can contact us at if you want to uh, explore building industry training and support options as well. This is you again, Carol. And I guess as we're getting close to the end here, but I, um, we, both Seth and I wanted to point out that you know, a lot of folks, I mean, you know, energy is kind of invisible and other than getting the bill every two, every two months or whatever, you don't really think about how you're using energy. So we're trying to make it a bit more visible in both BC Hydro and Fortis PC. You can go online. It's either it's my hydro or account online for Fortis. And um, you, you can look at exactly how much energy is used each day, each hour, if you want to. Even I think it, we, it breaks down into 15 increments. So you can see exactly when you plug in the vacuum cleaner or when the fridge comes on. You know, and it just help, helps you figure out what's being used in your home. And again, you can compare with how you were, how much energy you're using last year, et cetera. And of course, you can talk about, you know, how you can do your account settings and you can move and change. I mean, it's all done electronically. I think it's really um, very, very user friendly, really easy. And let's say if you want to encourage your residents in your community to use it, or if you, if you want us to help 
uh, chat with some of your folks, you know, how to, how to figure out how they're using energy in their homes, you know, let us know because we can probably help. We can do their community presentation via Zoom or something like that, but just help people figure out how they're using energy in their homes if they're concerned about it. Um, yeah, exactly. And um, and so th these are just two sort of screenshots of the different interfaces with uh, BC Hydro's sort of My Hydro account. And that's just showing, you know, some uh, basic consumption information and similar on the right side with Forest BC. And I think statistics have shown that um, simply just tracking your energy consumption, like being aware of and paying attention to it, leads to, I think, reduced, uh, like on average, 5% to 11% uh, energy use, household energy use. So just paying attention um, and, and interested often to, uh, to savings. And again, here's another video link. We're not going to play it, because, uh, but again, you could do, do the, uh, check it out afterwards because this is a, a new online tool that Fortis has. And again, it, it gets to play around with how you use energy in your home and figure out how to maybe re help reduce it. Um, you can sort of do a virtual energy evaluation of your home. And, and, and it'll give you some recommendations of no cost, low cost activities you can do, or of course, more, you know, uh, high cost, you know, replacements like a new furnace or new windows. Um, but I'll just say, if, if people just log on to this, they immediately get $10 credit on their next bill. And, and if they go through a couple of activities, like they promise to turn the, you know, turn the lights off or turn the heat down, the thermostat down overnight, they'll get another There'll be, there's credits on your bill every every couple of months if you want. If you just keep on logging in, you will continue to get credits on your bill. So I highly recommend it. And again, if you want to promote this to your community members and you'd like us to help describe it, we'd happily do that. Um, Team Power Smart uh, is another sort of a similar, I guess a similar incentive um, that BC Hydro offers for Hydro customers. So you can uh, register to be part of Team Power Smart and um, take on a challenge and you can earn credits on your bill as well uh, if you reduce energy consumption in your household. Make energy conservation into a bit of a game. <laughs> can make it fun. <laughs> as can. fun as it can be, yeah. Yeah, as fun as it can be, yeah. Um, and then lastly, here we're just going to talk again about, um, and I think maybe a number of folks on this call have participated, but these were a series of uh, online webinars um, for Indigenous communities, very specifically about energy efficiency and various things from very, very simple behavior kinds of things that you can do, again, like turning the temperature, the thermostat down at night to much more sort of of uh, sophisticated recommendations, you know, how for, for housing managers, how, how to be looking for energy efficiency and what to, things that they could be doing. All of these uh, webinars were recorded and now have been made into a series of YouTube um, uh, programs and, and uh, podcasts as well. So you can listen on the way of, if you're out working in the garden <laughs> or of course you watch it on, on YouTube as well. And these were well attended and uh, Let's say well attended. They were, they were meant to be small groups, but it really a lot of interaction, and that, I think it was really valuable. And it is through the Fraser Basin Council First Nations Home Energy Save that you can find all the, the, these links easily. And with that, that's it. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks very much. Our contact information is there if you want to get a hold of Carol and I specifically. And uh, if you are in a community that has um, both natural gas connection and electricity, Carol and I would be happy to kind of get together with you at the same time to talk about the intricacies of that. Because it could be confusing, but we can help uh, explain it. Yep. <laughs> Thanks very much for, uh, for making time for us. We're like right at half an hour, Carol. We're trying to be fast. Thank you, Seth and Carol. Uh, you share very valuable information and also um, some tips to reduce our bills. It's, it's a, it's a, there are good tips. So thank you for all um, the great questions and answering the chat box. Uh, if your question was not answered, then, then please ask during our questions and answer period. So now, finally, I want to pass over Leona Hamchin from the Halsuk uh, Nation. Uh, Joanna, uh, can you please pull out Joanna's presentation?
Can you see the presentation okay? Yes. Yeah, yo, Mami Asla, Jukulaksnugwa, Hesjokamnugwa. My name is Leona Hamchit. I'm from the Health of Nation of Beautiful, Bella Bella, BC. And I'm part of the local Haitia Climate Action Team. I wanted to thank uh, BCFN for inviting me to share this space with my friends at uh, the province and BC Hydro uh, to share a little bit about what we're doing on the home front. Uh, as part of our clean energy planning, Heltic uh, is one of 15 First Nations from across Canada that made successful application to the Indigenous Off Diesel Initiative. Currently, we were working toward developing a community-led uh, clean energy plan. Due to COVID, we pivoted to virtual sessions through a platform called Ethlo, and that platform is used uh, for consen consensus building and, and strong community engagement. Normally, like other First Nations, we meet in person, we feast, we meet regarding business and have some cultural sharing. But as a result of COVID, you know, we've had to pivot to the, the virtual sessions and this platform has provided us, provided us an opportunity to share with our members about clean energy literacy and a mechanism for them to provide input to our clean energy plan. It's been a really uh, exciting uh, opportunity to, to develop strong community engagement with our, our people. And I just wanted to quickly share, you know, the first part of our engagement was uh, uh, through our community engagement process, we collected feedback through two visioning sessions with our community, our Nina Wakala, or our elders, our Himas, our chiefs, and our Wiyumaks, our women of high rank and did so on an online survey. We listened carefully to what was said um, and over 300 people gave input to these statements. We witnessed their climate grief for our land, water and resources. We appreciated the time and energy everyone had given to the process. On behalf of the Health of Climate Action Team, it was our honor to do this very hard work or hard work uh, for our children's tomorrows. The vision that we came up with was the Heistrich Nation is practicing clean energy sovereignty and resiliency by utilizing wind, sun, earth, and water in accordance with our Gui laws and our cyclical worldview. Our mission is to educate and engage the Heistrich community to ensure ownership of our collective climate action work to cultivate the abundance of the Heisha homelands for future generations by living in balance and exercising Heisha sovereignty. To adapt to climate change by creating and implementing a clean energy plan as Heisha people with specific policies, targets, and strategies. To create equitable access to clean energy for all Heisha derived from the gifts of our creator and Heisha homelands, to increase human well-being through transformation to a carbon neutral community. And uh, that's the work that we had coming out of the, the first portion of our engagement with the peop our people. Our second phase of our engagement will start soon. We're just uh, collecting the last bit of information on 11 clean energy strategies that we're going to uh, present to our community to prioritize for our clean energy plan. Our clean energy plan is driven by our, our local health and climate action team, which consists of strong Heistjok women and mentorship and support from our friend Aaron Stewart from Indigenous Clean Energy. Our very own Heistjok Michael Vey has recently joined us to support pending of our clean energy plan. So we're working really hard on our core values of, you know, doing things today by the Heistjok for the Heistjok. About our heat pump project, our community has about 420 residential units. In 2017, we started with a pilot project of 20 homes with many split heat pumps. In 2018, we retrofit another 20 homes. 
And I always say the beauty of uh, pilot projects is you can correct the trajectory. So, circulation of heat in our two level homes was insufficient, allowing us to revisit and switch to central heat pump systems that, sorry, that address distribution of heat and air conditioning more evenly. Through the power of partnerships with EcoTrust, we have secured an ad additional 91 units with a total of 131 homes completed as of March 31st, 2021. This transformative change represents 31% of our residential homeowners. We received funding for an additional 25 units since and look forward to moving this good work forward for our nation. This hard work, uh, we hired our own local consultant, Pamela Wilson of Tequila Consulting, which is our word to give advice. She was hired on as our project manager. EcoTrust supported Heltzik with grant writing, capacity development, strategic planning, skills and training, and support for energy home assessments. Coastal Heat Pumps was the company we hired uh, to do the installs. And in Pam's words, this partnership has created a true reconciliation among industry and First Nations people. They have been very respectful to our nation and its members. They are keen to know more about our culture and indigenous worldviews. For us, growth in place is key to re relationships. And coastal heat pumps supported that by training four local, for local people for installations. Our, tra our trainees had a step-by-step -step training plan, including furnace removal, tank removal, fuel recycling, fuel disposal, basic understanding of heat pumps for troubleshooting, and basic home maintenance. Our love for our elders or our Nina Wakala. This piecemeal approach made it difficult for allocations. Without question, our team chose to retrofit homes of our elders first. A decision-making matrix was created by PAM and approved by our community. Criteria and evaluation of the current heat source came into play. Uh, critical meant they had no heat or ample heat. Nearing critical meant instability of heat and increased challenges. And working heat meant the homeowner was on fixed income or the equipment was aging out. We are happy to report all our elders that have applied to date now have clean renewable energy in their homes. Our future vision is to continue to seek funding to retrofit all our residential homes to renewable energy Energy sovereignty is a desired feature state of ind Indigenous communities. The Haitia commend the Proud BC Fraser Basin Council, New Relationship Trust, Federation of Canadian Municipalities, and Indigenous Off Diesel Initiative for coming aboard and supporting our journey to clean energy sovereignty. I want to share a little video on our story. It's called the Bella Bella Heat P Pump Project. And just after that, if you want more information on our, on our clean energy work, please visit our website, um, healthsofclimateaction.ca. Walsk Aska to BCAFN for the invitation today. Joanna, can you play the video? <laughs> Two years of struggling with no heat there's people that can't even go out and get wood anymore. And it... So I have had a, a fairly high hydro bill using space heaters. So it's about $1,000 a month. With the oil furnace we had, um, it would heat up your home for half an hour to an hour, and then you turn the heat down, and then an hour later, it's cold again. Bella Bella's electricity grid is powered by the nearby Ocean Falls Dam. The heat pumps are high efficiency electric systems that draw heat from the outside air and transfer it into indoor living spaces. 
Yep, out with the old. Altogether, this project is removing more than 700 tons of greenhouse gas emissions annually, which is equivalent to taking 220 cars off the road every year. Not only that, but homes are healthier, more affordable, and more resilient to the impacts of climate change. Well, a strictly oil burning furnace that we're, we will be replacing with the new electrical unit. It's made a big difference in all these families' lives. It's nice. The house has a nice, sensible temperature when I come home. Really benefits our community. Then instead of using fossil fuel, we're changing to like electric. It has um, made an incredible difference in the in the hydro bills. Such a big difference from having no heat for two years to having it every day and not having to worry about getting sick. <laughs> Thank you, Leona. Uh, it's very good information. I, I, uh, 220 cars off the road is really, is really great. You know, we need more mm, projects like this. So now we are going to open this up for questions and comments for our participants. I know there are some, some questions in the chat and I, I believe um, Sean have answered some of the questions from, um, as, let me roll this up, from Joyce and also from Maswell. Um, I have a couple of questions here, but just remember you can uh, type your questions in the chat box, or if you want to speak, uh, you can also mute yourself and ask your question. So I will read one question here, actually it's from Leona to Carol or Seth, and she said, how can First Nations address the prescriptive nature of a string one and two and new homes program incentive and exterior doors alone can cost upwards at 2000. Be nice to just receive funding uh, with maximum funding for red or a mechanism to lever all streams for comprehensive energy updates without conditional prescription. So Carol or Seth, um, would you like to reply, please? Um, sure, I, I, I totally get what you're saying, Leona. Um, I, I'd say from a utilities perspective, we really are only allowed to provide funding for energy efficiency measures. And usually the difference between a standard, what you could, you could normally buy on the marketplace to what would be more efficient. So that's kind of the regulations that environment that we're working under right now. Um, we've tried to maximize them uh, as much as we possibly can. And of course, as we said, as Seth mentioned, we can stack it on anything else. If you are getting funding from CMHC or um, uh, you know, Indigenous Services Canada, um, you know, this just sort of stacks on top of that. Like I'll just mention, this is a Soyuz Indian band who again, which has sort of been ref retrofitting, you know, deep retrofitting every every home I think older than ten year ten years old in, on, on the reserve, and um, they got a, a good chunk of money from um, Indigenous Services Canada and Fortis BC, and and I think and and I think the, the the band put in a little bit as well. Either way, all none of the owners or renters of those homes having to pay anything, and they've had. You know, insulation improvements, new hot water tanks, new furnace. Well, the heat in this, this case, it was heat pumps. Um, I know Fortis BC provided about 600,000, and I think Indigenous Services Canada, 1.2 million uh, over a course of three years. So, again, just by being able to stack the money, we were able to, you know, do significant work at every single home. 
but they had to work together. And that was sort of, and I guess I mean, that sometimes that can be more of a challenge, but we did sit down and we made it together with the community. We, our, or the community took the lead on it, but we supported them. We did, built a plan, got the funding together. And I know the work is just being completed now and people are really, really happy. Thank yeah. you, Carol. Oh, go ahead. No, I, I can't think of anything to, to add to that necessarily. I was just going to acknowledge, I think, as well for Leona, that it is complicated trying to bring all of these different funding sources together. I totally recognize that. I think, like like Carol mentioned, I mean, the utilities have our limitations in the sense that we are regulated, right? So, like, our, our programs and, and the rebates that we can offer, they're based on that conservation um, they're, they're linked to the con energy conservation um, relative to before to after. So it does get tricky, but they are meant to be, to be stacked and really to give that extra boost to, you know, to take a regular funding um, application and amount that you might receive and to be able to give that leg up to get the more energy efficient option. But, um, but yeah. It can be prescriptive for sure, but I think, you know, we've been like around stream one, right? Like when COVID came, we were working with you. It's like, how can we do this? Like, how can we do a self-installation approach? Like, what does that look like? And I think we're, you know, we're really willing to kind of listen to challenges that you might be experiencing in, in delivering the program, you know, according to the prescriptive nature of it and, and like see what we can do to kind of flex and be adaptable within that. So there are, I guess, just some constraints because we're like regulated, but. Hopefully that answers your question a bit. Thank you, Seth. Thanks, Carol. Uh, I uh, go to the Patricia. Yes, Yana, do you would you like to answer that? Oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah, I just ahead. wanted to to mention this that uh, it goes without saying that we really appreciate you know the streams of fundings that are across the nation and how you know, public, private, and government are, are working more, you know, hand in glove, you know, especially to work toward our our targets going forward to for 2030, 2050, whatever ha you have, but people are working more collaboratively. And if there are ways to, you know, have that here in, in the province where we're, we're levering all the different funding initiatives to carry out this good work, you know, our community is remote and isolated, so COVID has really um, impacted what we can do as a community, and uh, we're still we're still you know working around making sure that we're making these uh, conservation efforts uh, going forward. Thank you, Seth and and Carol. Thanks, Liana. Uh, I can see Lee is um, wants to uh, speak. Please, Lee, can you unmute yourself? Yeah, Hentla and Squash, Lee Spahan, Cook, Bivin, Slut Cook. Hello and good afternoon, everyone. Lee Spahan, Chief to the Quarter Band. Uh, just 15 kilometers uh, west of Merritt, uh, speaking from the unceded territory of the Indicatlam Nation. Just a couple of questions in regards to um, the presentations. Are there any programs or um, funding for uh, water softeners because in our community the water is very very hard and it uh, have to constantly keep changing uh, elements or hot water tanks yeah. that, that's my first question my second question is we have a, a band member um, in the community on the second reserve where uh, the house is is fairly old and when they built it, I'm not sure what the age of it is, but they built the hydro line on the opposite side of the creek and um, BC Hydro was called in. And because the pole was kind of leaning up against the water pump house, they had to disconnect the power, which means it leaves no water, no running water for our homeowner. So... Is there a, a case where uh, BC Hydro can help out with that or what? Because just from talking to the homeowner, the bill started at $800 and is climbing now. So, at, you know, who's, whose fault was it to put the hydro pole on the wrong side? 
and now the homeowners have to pay for it and has to come out of their pocket because it's deemed as a private poll. So just some challenges that I have questions for that's happening in my community. Bookstam. Thank you, Chief Lee. Uh, Seth, would you like to respond to this question? Yeah, no, that's a really uh, a group, like excellent question and one that I'm definitely not equipped to, uh, to answer in terms of like the powerful placement, just speaking specifically about your community member. But, um, but Chief, I, I think I'll, I'm going to follow up with a colleague of mine who will be able to know how to kind of follow up and maybe look at that specific um, circumstance and, and see if there's any any port that can be offered or any way that we could try to kind of resolve that issue. That's like a tricky a tricky one for sure. Um, so I will get uh, or my colleague in Indigenous Relations at BC Hagu will uh, will follow up with you on that. And then related to water softeners, there aren't any, um, like, because that's not necessarily a, an energy conservation issue, it is um, unfortunate. I know, like, hard water is is definitely, a, I think, a concern in, in so many communities in the province and, and the effect that that has on, on hot water tanks. Um, we don't, at this time, have any rebates or supports um, on the market for, for anything like that because it's, yeah. Thanks, Seth. Um, anybody else wants to respond? Oh, no? Okay, thanks. I I have, a, I think it's a question from Jeff. Um, he asks if a spray farm insulation quality also, uh, qualify, sorry, qualify if it's also part of what you're offering for rebates or for... Um, um, yes, it does. It does have to be installed. Uh, installed by uh, a certified installation person um, and, and they can provide you know again how many square feet was, was installed the r value etc so yes when we say insulation it could be styrofoam it could be bat in you know, bat insulation it really doesn't matter um, so yes it does yeah thanks carol um, anybody else would like to ask a questions to the speakers I don't see any uh, Sorry. Hi, I have a question. Go ahead, Joyce. <clears throat> uh, Carol, I have a question to Carol. Um, you know, for on reserve, you know, I noticed um, a lot of members are still paying taxes, whether it's Fortis or BC Hydro. Is there a better... Um, I don't know, is there more information that we can share with our community members so that they know that when they're on reserve that they don't need to be paying the taxes? Is yeah. there, yes. So I, I could uh, follow up with you online uh, okay. or any other community member. Um, yes, you do, um, uh, householders have to let, I'm not speaking from Fortis BC's perspective, but I think it's the same for BC Hydro. You have to let us know that you are living on reserve and are eligible for the uh, no, uh, no tax, but because otherwise we don't know. But I can provide um, basic information of what your, your uh, residents need to do in terms of who they have to call and what they have to say. And we will have that, have that taken off their bills immediately. Joyce, I'll, I'll send Carol the same like link and information, and then she can send you one one email so you have uh, both both of them all together. If that's uh, if that helps. Okay. And how long can you go? Uh, how far back can you go back to get a credit on your account? I don't know, but I'll find out about that as well. Okay. Uh, I think that's it so far. Thank you, Joyce. Um, Maybe Carol or Sel, you can send us the, the answer, or we can share Joyce email with you, so you can connect direct directly with yeah. her. Okay, I think Chief Lee wants to uh, talk. That it, just a follow up to that last question. I was just wondering, you know, it as as Indigenous people and First Nations people, uh, it wasn't our duty to. Um, put expiration dates on our status cards 
But when our people are, are have to reapply, is BC Hydro gonna retroactive pay on the taxes when our band members have to wait for status cards? Because it seems like it's almost uh, up to two years somebody can wait for a status card, and it's not even our fault. It's the it's the um, the government. And they're trying to say that it has to do with COVID-19. Well, it, it, it was in place way before COVID-19. And um, there's longer and longer waiting periods for status cards. So how is uh, BC Hydro going to be retroactive to back pay on that? Thank you, Chief Lee. I think, I, I think it's a great question, actually. Maybe uh, not, I'm not sure if it also applied to Carol or... Sean to answer in their respective programs? Yeah, yeah I think we, we'll, we'll get this information that we'll provide to, to you um, and, and make sure you share with, with everyone on this call. So we'll, we'll get that information together. Yeah. Thank you. Um, any other question? So when you get back to us with the answers, who's going to be sending that to, to us on the call? Is that going to be the BC AFN or representatives from BC Hydro? I think we'll go through Patricia. Yeah, um, I can also share a Chief Lee email if he agree. And you can also connect directly. So in case you have um, further questions. How would you prefer it, Chief Lee? Would you like us to follow up with you directly or through through BCAFN? What's your preference? I think, um, well, if if other people are going to want answers on this call, why can't you just CC the BCAFN as well too? Sure. So that yes. way the answers don't only go to me, it goes to the other people on the call as well too. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's a very good idea. And also, uh, perhaps we can um, have a summary of the questions and we can post those in our uh, website as well. Um, in BCFN website, we will have all the information from this webinar, including the slides and uh, other resources available. So um, go to BCFN and environmental emergency and climate change emergency, and you will find uh, a webinar information there. Any other question? It looks like I don't have more questions here. I'm going to share my screen and to finalize this webinar. So before wrapping up, I will very quickly mention some additional programs and service available on this topic. Last week, the federal government announced that the Green Inclusive Community Buildings Program is open for applications. This program will support projects for retrofits, repairs, upgrades, or for even new projects for community buildings. So projects under 3 million can submit their applications at any time. Um, for larger retrofits and new buildings, uh, 3 million or um, greater, uh, that in line is July 6. Uh, information including application instructions, timeline, eligibility, and evaluation criteria uh, can be found in the program website. I'm going to copy the link to the chat uh, so you can have it, but also um, the link will be in our um, website. Um, also, the Fraser Racing Council offers a First Nations Con Energy Save program, um, which includes a service called as an energy specialist. Through this service, the, BIS, the Fraser Racing Council offers support to First Nations communities that are in the earliest stage of planning of implementing energy efficiency housing projects, so you can also reach out to them if you need more assistance. Um, I will copy the links now, so you can, you will have 
those in the chat box, especially the maybe Tom, I think from the Fraser Racing Council is also in this webinar. Maybe he can share the link to. Oh, just give me a second here. Copy this link. Um, I've just, I've just sent the, um, the link in the chat there for people to access the RC Energy list. No worries. Thanks, Tong. And oh, perfect. Uh, thanks, Tong. And also the link for this new program, the federal program, is also there. So, um, finally, uh, we BCFN has a climate change distribution list. So, if you would like to subscribe to the list to this list, please send an email to me. And usually what well, mm, I share information through this distribution list in funding applications or other uh, relevant information from climate change. So our next webinar, I hope we won't have any technical issues for the next webinar, is going to be um, uh, on public um, climate data including historical climate data and projections to develop climate actions. So if you want to be um, updated with this information, please subscribe to the BCFN Climate Change Distribution List. I just want to say thank you to all our speakers today. Thanks for making, for taking the time to prepare their, your slides and share all the information. And also thank you very much to all the, the attendees um, that join us today. Um, uh, and uh, thank you again and have a, a great afternoon. Thanks. <laughs>